Hey there, uh, this is uh, Django from uh, Killside Customs, and this is the uh, Awesome Sauce uh, prototype number two, the Orbital Machining Darth Maul. Uh, it's a one to one size, and it will not fit entirely in frame. So it's going to be a little bit moving around and stuff with the camera. Hopefully, it won't uh, be too bad. Um, this came to me as a uh, completely uh, unpainted and unbuilt. Um, it was basically a big old parts kit. Uh, I kind of wish I would have taken some pictures of it uh, beforehand, but uh, I didn't think about it. So um, you'll just have to trust me. Uh, all the uh, black elements, all the rings here and through here, this is all um, unpainted. I actually uh, started doing some powder coating so I decided to powder coat this so it would be a nice durable finish and last forever. Um, so all of these details had to be masked off and um, powder coated on, I used a, a flat Tuscan black, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, but it came out pretty well, uh, it was only the uh, the second, well, second and third hilts I've uh, ever uh, done. The uh, Saber is a one-to-one -one size for the uh, screen used Darth Maul. Sound holes are hidden under here and here and here. The recharge port is here. As you can see, I have a pretty crappy uh, kill key. I want to come up with something that's uh, detachable but secure as well, and this is just something that's taking up space because I want it to be able to display it with the kill key in and when I want to, to take it out and think about doing something with magnets. But, uh, Hopefully have something uh, as an update when I get to it. Or maybe just a simple screw in. I don't know. Anywho, uh, since it's a, here we go. Kind of long uh, boot sound for that one. Um, anyway, the setup in this is uh, not your typical setup for one of these kind of sabers. It's a this is set up as a single hilt. There is a crystal focus six and uh, color extender in this end. There is uh, speakers on either end, two watt high bass speakers. They're both running in parallel from the CF. The power supply is down in here. It's uh, two 18500s, and they're a very tight fit. Only the lines can fit around, and it's basically held in place by um, this switch right here. I mean, it's it's pretty clamped down onto it. Uh, the LEDs in it are tri rebel uh, RRWs in each end. Um, the accent LEDs are um, they do scroll through the bar graph, and it basically starts on this end and works it way down. Uh, this is the idle because this is actually the main power switch. There's only two switches on this uh, saber. Um, this is the main power. And as you can see it goes through the uh, accents sequence from one end to the other. It's one of the things I wanted to do. Um, this is the auxiliary switch here. So if somebody was holding the saber here, they could actually power it on here and then use the auxiliary button for blaster effects and moving it around. And if they were holding it two hands, uh, I guess right here or closer, they could still reach the uh, switches if needed. I didn't want to do it out here because it, it looked weird to me when I was holding it. So that's the way I did that. Um, you notice you're not seeing any uh, light come from the ends because this. These are the uh, um, blade plugs and to, to keep it looking uh, nice and neat, but they don't let any light out at all. See, this one's out just a little bit. Which is good, because if you wanted to just uh, you know do the scene from Tatooine with only one uh, of the uh, ends exposed, which is what we're going to do right now, There it is. And this is the 
blade retention screws. It's hidden. It's very small up here. And this is one of the blade plugs. It's a really nicely machined uh, block of aluminum. with the uh, Corbin film and the um, polypropylene. It's a nice bright red. There's also, if you take off this emitter, and you can go in, and there's a rice cable inside, so any of the, um, if I wanted to adjust any of the settings, all I'd have to do is, you know, fish that out. You have to take this off. It's a little bit of a procedure to do so. Um, well, next we can put the other blade in. The reason I wanted to just use one sound card in this is because um, I didn't like the way I, I've done ones with dual sound cards, and I never really liked the way that the sounds conflicted. I wanted it to have like that's why it has two speakers instead of one. The only problem with using one soundboard and running, getting it to run everything is that you're going to get a double clash, really no matter how, way, how you wire it. Let's see if I can capture it both. protection that was mad cow's revenge that's the uh, eye saber Ghost of the Grey. I kind of like this uh, font, so I wanted to try something new out. You can get that um, in all these fonts at uh, saberfont.com, by the way.
little bit of a comparison. I don't have a, a mall to um, show you guys with it. But I do have some uh, accurate replicas. I'm not going to turn these on. So you can see the size. This is my the Phantom Menace set. That is the uh, Vader's Vault uh, Saber Concepts Qui Gon run with the accurate uh, deep grips. It's still uh, stock with a PC. In it. I haven't gotten around to upgrading it. That is the uh, Orbital Machining's Darth Maul. And uh, it's too. Anyway, um, that's about it for the demo. And uh, Hopefully Watt will uh, decide to do the run so everybody else can get one of these. It's, uh, it's a really nice and accurate piece. Um, the install wasn't too bad, but there are some things you have to look out for. And uh, I'll answer those questions in thread if uh, need be. Thanks for looking, and uh, enjoy your sabers. Later.